Hi guys and welcome to Old School Hunter to the third part in my video series on how I built my animated witch cauldron. Our witch overestimated herself a little bit and the giant spider doesn't quite fit into the cauldron. The spider of course doesn't really like it, the legs hang out and move around and to be honest who wants to end up in a witch cauldron. So in today's part I'm building the mechanics and the controls into the witch cauldron to end up with what you see behind me. I provide the links to the first and second part down in the description and of course I will put the links at the end of the video too. But now I wish you a lot of fun with the third part on my Animated Witch Cauldron. So as the first step I will create the cover of the cauldron, so the stuff which boils out of the cauldron and will cover the cauldron from the top. And this, I call it the foam dome, is created from expanding foam and therefore I'll use some kind of construction underneath and therefore I cut out a rounded piece of plywood. I will use 20mm plywood here and the circle will have a diameter of 58cm here and will be used as a kind of construction underneath so the expanding foam will not fall into the cauldron. So here we have it, our 20mm plywood from the construction yard. So a little bit dirty, but I don't care about it at this point. So as a first, I will draw the circle onto the plywood, but this is more for orientation for me, because for cutting out the circle, I will use a router here, and I will use a small router bit. And I will use the router because I have this guidance here and I can put it in the center of the circle and then I can cut out the circle very easy. If you use the router don't go the 20 millimeter at once. This will not be very funny. I will go 5 millimeter on depth to the first circle at another 5 millimeter on depth to the next circle until I cut through the 20 millimeter plywood. As an alternative, if you don't have a router, you can always use a jigsaw at this point. Alright, plywood's in. This time it's a support construction, but later on it will get a real usage. So anyway, I can create my foam dome now. And the foam dome will have a height of 17 cm in the center here. So 17 cm from this point to the top. And because I don't want to use too much expanding foam, I will add a small tower of styrofoam blocks in the center about 15 centimeters in height and then I will put some kitchen foil on top and on top of the kitchen foil I will add the expanding foam. The kitchen foil will hang down at the edges here and the rest of the cauldron will get covered in construction foil so it won't mess up. The height of the expanding foam will be about 5 to 8 centimeters so I will add some blocks of styrofoam as a template for the height but you know we don't talk about 5 mm here, so 5 to 8 cm or more in orientation here.
Well, what should I say? Things can't always go well on YouTube videos and in this case it probably was too much expanding foam or the foam comes up too much. In any case it wasn't planned this way. But in the end I won't get a cauldron that boils over and yeah, <laughs> that's what I got here. So anyway, I will leave it this way and go on to the next step to add the mechanics for the movement because I don't think that this giant heap of foam will kill the next step. Since a spider is sitting in my cauldron at the end where only the legs are visible which will move at the end, I will now add the holes into the expanding foam and since the spider has eight legs, four on each side, I will add four holes this way here and four on the opposite side and at the beginning the holes will have a diameter of about five centimeter here and then I will expand the holes later on when I know how much space I need for the movement of the legs. Hole in eight or something like that. All eight holes are done and so it looks like. And this is not the final size of the holes as I said. I now know where my legs are attached to and as next step I will work with the plywood that's underneath here. Alright, I will work on the inner circle now and therefore I will create an edge an outer circle with a width of 10 cm. I'll cut out the inner circle and the outer circle will be used to hold the mechanics for the legs and the inner circle will be placed at the bottom of the cauldron and is used to attach the motor at the end. So right, the outer ring is in the cauldron and now it's time to mark the positions where the attachments of spider legs will be placed. And therefore I will put the foam dome on top of the cauldron again, then I will use some spray paint and spray from the outside through the holes and then I will see the paint spots and then I know where to put the attachments for the legs. Alright, the position for the legs are marked and now it's time to create the mounting for the legs. Therefore I use such pipes here. It's a 45 degree angel and the diameter is 40 millimeters and such brackets here with a side length of 5 centimeters by 5 centimeters. And then I place the brackets on the left and on the right of the pipe, drill a hole through the pipe, add a screw and then pipe can rotate between the brackets. So now it's time to assemble the mounting for the leg and this is very simple. I take the bracket, then such a screw, 6 mm in diameter and 16 mm length and attach it this way to the bracket. Now I take a washer, the pipe elbow, add another washer and now at the end I use a self-securing nut. And now 
now the mounting for the leg is finished. All right, back at the cauldron and now the mountings for the legs will be attached to the outer ring. And here I have my marks where the holes are in the foam dome so the legs will look out of the foam dome. And the mountings will be attached this way that the tube will be above such a marker here. So this way here. Now that I placed the inner circle in the cauldron again, I will now transfer the positions of the legs to the inner circle here. This is the bottom plate from the cauldron, so the inner circle. And now I'm going to create the drive system. And therefore I use two wiper motors. And this is a little overkill at this point, I have to admit. But two motors allow me to control each side of the legs separately. So I can run them in synchronous manner. And you can probably use one wiper motor, then the effect of the legs will look a little different to mine. But it won't be a problem. At the positions where I marked the legs, I will put some L brackets here. And these are 6 by 10 centimeters with screws in place like this. And then at the top of the bracket, I will attach such small rope rolls here because a small pulley is used to drive the whole system. So right, uh, before I add this thing into the cauldron, I will add the pulley and therefore I use 2mm fishing line here and the fishing line is attached to the washers with the holes which I pre-drilled here and the arms I added to the motor here create a movement of 3cm in total so you have 1.5cm from this point from the motor to this bolt here. The drive system is inside the cauldron and you see there's not so much space inside and that's why I add the fishing line beforehand. So all what's left now is to attach the fishing line to the right tube 
And to do this, I pre-drill some holes here. And all I have to do is take the fishing line, put it through the hole, make a knot, and I'm done. So all right, everything is connected and now it's time for the test run. All right, that was successful and now it's time to add the foam dome, the magic foam dome. And then we will see how it looks like when we add the spider legs. All right, to create the spider legs, I use such pipe isolations here, like other tutorials on YouTube also do. And here I use a few different sizes. So we have one with 45 millimeter in outer diameter, 40 millimeter and 35 millimeter and my spider legs consist out of three sections or parts and each section will have the same length so I cut out a piece of each with the same length. So here we have the three pieces and to be able to put them together I cut out a triangle on the middle part and on the smallest part I also cut out a small triangle on one side and a long triangle on the other side because the spider leg will get thinner and thinner towards the end. So I cut out the triangles. So here we have the middle part. And now I can put them together. Here's the smallest part, a small triangle and a long triangle and you see the leg is getting thinner and thinner towards the end. Alright, in order to glue the leg together I use such contact glue here and this is an incredible thing and I will put the glue onto the areas where I cut out the triangles and also into the isolations in order to put the legs together and after I put on the glue, I have to wait about 5 to 10 minutes to let the glue dry a little bit before I can put everything together. Alright, time is over, glue is dried and now it's time to push the pots together. Push them correctly because you only get one chance. Now this is the base for the spider leg. Alright, glue has dried and since straight spider legs look a little bit strange, I apply some heat to this part here using the heat gun. But be careful here, tube isolation melts immediately. a bent leg. And now to finish the spider legs, a layer of black color is applied. All 
side my spider will also get ahead and therefore I use the styrofoam block here and this is 20 cm by 15 by 10 cm and I will cut it out from this block. On the bottom side of the head I will create a slot where I can add the pneumatic cylinder. So on the bottom side we have this T-slot here and this is to attach the pneumatic cylinder to the head because I have to be able to remove the head because the cylinder is attached to the cauldron and it goes as the following. I put the head onto the pneumatic cylinder like this and to lock the cylinder and the head I created this metal clip here and this will be placed in this slot here and then the pneumatic cylinder is secured, is locked and to secure the clip I use this small wire here, I hope you can see it and this will be put into the styrofoam and then the clip is secured to the styrofoam and the pneumatic cylinder is locked to the head. And to remove it again, I simply pull the wire, take out the clip, and then I can remove the head from the cylinder.
So with this, the project Animated Witch Card Run is finished. As any project, there's always a lot of room for improvements, changes and what would you do differently. So especially the head of the spider is something that's not really the way I want it to be. So I think I will rework it after Halloween. But as in any project, you have to find a point in time where you tell yourself the project is finished so far. There will be a separate video about the techniques inside the witch cauldron, so I will show you in detail about the wiring, the control mechanisms and so on. So be sure you are subscribed to my channel so you don't miss this upcoming video. Until Halloween there will be other projects that want to come to life, so be curious about what's coming up. I will definitely take you on the journey in my projects again. Feel also free to write me in the comments what you think about this project here. Do you have questions? Uh, what would you do differently? I think this could be interesting. And of course, if you like the video, if you like the project, please give me a thumbs up too. So for today, I say thanks for watching. Looking forward to next projects and wish you happy Halloween.